Hello, everyone, and welcome to November 21st, 2023, 7.30 Library Board meeting. Um, two things. First, I'm, our next meeting, uh, if everyone's in favor, we should have a Christmas party like we did last year prior to our meeting. Um, so let's set a date. Look on your calendars. Keeping in mind that we would meet like 6, 6.30 and start our meeting at 7.30, if that's okay with everyone. What works for everyone? How does the 19th work? Oh. How's the 20th sound? Um, 14th would work for me, unfortunately. Um, I don't know, but I think 14th would work. Okay. Let's, let's put it down on the 14th and I'll, um, email Mike Lewis to see if that works with our, um, credit card bills and stuff. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Ooh. <laughs> I'll try that third time. Worst case scenario. We could always do a zoom, maybe, um, second meeting to approve things if we needed to you know what I mean okay if it didn't work so like the 20th if we did it really quickly and just approved financials or something like that okay so okay great okay so let's do 12 14 let's say um six o'clock does six o'clock work for everyone okay so six o'clock um Ken Gilman um you know, please come, um, you know, Mike, all of our, please invite people, the foundation, please tell them. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Do I have, um, Jenna Weiss? Sorry. Present. Mary Ellen Walsh. Present. Selena Shen. Present. Ann Benefico. Present. Mike Clark. Present. Valerie Nelson. Present. John. Here. And Bonnie's here. Great. I have a quorum. Do I have a approval to uh, approve the minutes from October 24th, 2023 board I, meeting? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the October board meeting. Do I have a second? Second. That was Mike Clark. All in favor? Aye. Great. And one more thing I have to remark, um, Steve Vandervelt, and this is his show. It's going through December 30th. Um, several people have asked me about it, um, very well attended this weekend. And so please going through December 30th. So it's gonna be up here for a while. Oh, um, I was gonna do that in grant. Okay, yes. And so the acoustic tile, so during the show here, which was great because Steve spoke, there must've been about 50 or 60 of us. If you notice there's acoustic tiles in, if you notice, and we have Jessica from the um, foundation, thank you. Um, so the acoustic tiles are in there. If you notice, they're above the paintings uh, or the photographs. And if you notice, they're on the ceilings. They did an excellent job and it really worked um, when we had the reception here. I, it was crisp, no, no voice sound back or anything. It, everyone was impressed who was here. And again, there was about 50 or 60 of us. So great job, everyone. Thank you, Foundation. Okay, Ken Gilman, Buildings and Grounds. The main thing to talk about is the roof. Uh, estimates are in, I think there are four. Um, there's been some discussion about the preservation board and the person at the preservation board said, uh, said uh, that if a building permit is needed, then someone has to go before the planning board. Well, I spoke to Jim Perry personally he said the planning board does not have to be involved in this at all. If when they start, whoever starts doing the roof, they find that things have to be repaired that need a building permit, which my best guess would be yes, considering the age, that all the roofer has to do is go to Jim, Jim will be here, 
He'll look at things, a permit will be issued, and work will continue instead of a delay. So uh, I guess later in the meeting, you're all going to talk about who should do the roof. And as I said earlier to a couple of people, my suggestion and recommendation would be that you have Perry do the roof, Perry's roofing do the roof. Well, I think we should but, talk about it now since you're the one that okay. that um, was meeting the contractors. So as you see, we um, Ken has called four of them. Um, three of them got back. So we currently have Cedar Shake roof now. Our grant over only covers the Cedar Shake roof so that half of it would be paid if we go asphalt it does not cover that just to let you know if we go asphalt instead of cedar shake we do have to go in front of landmarks but if we keep it cedar shake we do not have to go in front of landmarks um any thoughts any comments i i thought there was also i don't know if it was the state or somebody that i thought i thought i read somewhere that we could not switch from cedar isn't that accurate yeah they suggest it, so suggest, but our, our, yes, but our landmarks did say that asphalt, they sounded like they would approve. And the state again, did suggest that we keep it Cedar shake. Um, any other comments Anne? so if you notice, um, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but we are leaking the tiles above where, um, where you first come in, um, are getting stained. Those are leaks. Um, I found out from Ken Gilman, Perry, who's done a lot of work in this town, can do it probably within a month. Um, he's not the cheapest, but he's not that far off from Norwalk roofing. Um, Perry is all over our town. Um, I know he did Ken's roof. I know he's done a lot of my neighbor's roofs. I like the fact that he can do it within a month because I don't want snow on a flat roof. They're predicted a lot of snow this year. So thoughts or emotion? My, I, he hasn't, they haven't given, de but my best guess is that they would say, it's not something that it's just going to go into the spring or anything like that. I mean, he has not said because he doesn't know that he's got the job yet, but I'm sure he can move things around because I had a client a week ago who got in touch with him, said, I'd like you to do my roof and they're doing it well, not as we speak, but they were there today. So. And can you provide a recommendation? What is your recommendation? My recommendation is Perry's. Perry with yeah. the Cedar Shake. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's my recommendation. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I, th I have no problem absolutely to uh, go with the second uh, bid, I think, based on this recommendation. Absolutely. So I need a motion. Uh, I've I've also been very successful with Perry for my business. I make a motion that we go ahead with Perry with the Cedar Shake at the cost of forty nine thousand eight hundred. Yep. Do I have a second? I second it. All in favor? Now, are we going to see John if we could use some restricted funds? Yeah, we're we're exploring that, but from a timing perspective, and I want to know when the grant money comes in, we'll we'll see what we need to do. We don't have that much liquid right now, based on how it's invested, but we can see what we can cover. Otherwise, we'll cover it out of some other uh, some other funds then. Okay, that's an uh, an excellent question that we should discuss a little bit at the finance uh, committee report. Can I, sorry, can I just ask why does it say grant? Can you scroll down? Why does it say grant pays half zero for friends Oso? Oh, I, okay. The grant does not only covers asphalt. No, only covers cedar shit. Oh, right. Okay. Got it. Okay, great. Ken, anything else? Thank you, Ken. You too. Okay. Next is the warrants. Is there anything added other than the 46,264, Jennifer? Has everyone looked at the... Um... Does any... 
Any questions? Okay, do I um, have a motion to approve the warrants if there's no questions? The acoustic panels, the, is this, because we it looks like we paid it here, Jennifer, does that then we now request or did we already request from the foundation? Sorry. Uh, the first half was paid um, by the credit card. Second half is going to be paid by a check. We have received the funds from the foundation. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion uh, to approve warrants of 46,264.18. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Great. Um, this, this afternoon I moved $50,000 from savings into uh, checking to cover the warrants and I'll check with the accountant to see if there's any further uh, movement I need. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mike. Okay, committees, finance, John. Before we get there, we have to actually decide if we're going to change committees for the, you know, like we didn't do it last month. Remember that was that committee assignment? I'm going to go through the committees and then do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you think? John? So this is the first meeting where we do not have Michael Lewis here. We're going to move him to a quarterly uh, visit. Um, and then as this goes forward, because this is the first one, I'll try to review it a little more ahead of time than this week. But uh, there's really no, no real changes here or anything to report from what we said last time, the time before. Um, and then we're also looking at, you know, maybe some other analysis to present as far as where we're at with sort of current operating versus, you know, some kind of other funds and things like that. Uh, but I've gone through this. I don't know if, if you have, by the way, our packet's missing page two, but it's on the file. Um, and it's the same story, right? The, you know, we're a little ahead because we don't have like the, compared to last year, we don't have those big losses, which were paper anyway, that we had last year, um, just because things have stabilized. Uh, and then we're spending a little more on programs right then you know we we did last year but that's by design you know for kind of the match demand um you know and i think we're kind of saving in different spots but it's overall i think uh pretty consistent to what we've been presented before okay any questions on the finances so just to can i talk about the uh we, we did have a conversation with uh, our investment advisor so everything's moved over everything's fine Looking at strategies, um, I think good news is, in fact, you know, we looked at New York State and the policies. It's pretty open, if you will. Like, we don't have to be invested in, like, the most secure muni bonds ever like we had before. doesn't mean it's going to be high risk, but there's parameters there. But it, it opens things up a little bit, particularly because, you know, as we said, that's longer money than, you know, needing it right now. Uh, that being said, though, the the bonds that we were in were kind of in and it was this maturity ladder type of, you know, uh, investment strategy. So it is a little harder to get out of it until these kind of come due. So in, in those accounts getting to what we could use for the roof, there was only like, you know, 10 or 20,000. And then I think another 30 or something coming up maybe next year, whatever the numbers were, we, we can think about it. We also can look at other places to get that money if we have to fund it or fund it to carry over until the, you know, the uh, the grant comes in uh, as we go through. I don't want to take the whole amount and then sell things that we don't necessarily need if we have liquidity in other places, which I think we do for the budget. 
we did. So yeah, we did. Working with them there to to figure that out, but I I think we're in a good place and we'll get it set up. It's a long term thing, but certainly as, as we can access the money for for capital projects, we would. I I I know I recently reread, and I'll do it again from a legal perspective. But one of the questions I would have is, even though there if those funds aren't liquid, you take it someplace else. Can you you know? then take it from there later and move it. You know what I mean? So when it becomes liquid, we'd be able to move it into our general fund instead of keeping it as restricted in that if we, even though it might be six months later. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, look, I, I think, I mean, there's no one administering these, like the trust. We're not violating the rules. I think we can move the money around so we can pay for it just later when the trust is in a better position to actually have the liquidity to get the money out we're in the position now that we have, you know, we have liquid other liquid air funds that we can use to then pay for it uh, and time it out, at, you know, as needed. And then, you know, there's other strategies there too, right? If we're not using the income for some, why invest in things that are generating a lot of income? Maybe we don't need to do that. We can put it in other things just to grow. So there's, it was a good conversation. Uh, it's definitely for a longer term, but we're, we're thinking of having a portion liquid, a portion longer, and you know, be responsible with it. Great. Any questions? Okay, moving along, Mike Clark. Um, there were two policies to be reviewed. Uh, Anne, do you want to uh, talk about your uh, the policy that you wrote up? Um, we uh, the, the policy that um, two policies were uh, unattended children, and then I reviewed the patron conduct policy. And I think that was that was in the Dropbox. Uh, Jennifer had uh, given us one that the, I guess the American Library Association recommended and Jennifer um, kind of edited that a little bit. And then I also read through several other libraries that are probably a lot larger, maybe major cities um, in major cities. So based on, um, sorry, the American Library Association, we kind of, uh, uh, mimic that one and added a few more um, clauses to it. And I believe it's it's in the Dropbox. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we want to bring up any other. Do you want to bring up the service dog? Yes. Yeah. So, 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 and I had one suggestion yeah, okay. on the patron conduct. It's in the document. The respect for others, it says the use of mobile phones and electronic devices should be done quietly. Mm -hmm. I actually think we should say you shouldn't be on your mobile your mobile phone in a phone I, call I, in the I, library. I actually saw your comments yeah, on the okay. sheet. Yeah, I didn't know you could write comments on that <laughs> when, I, when I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think Jennifer proposed a change, which I'm fine with, which is if you need to make a call or engage in activities on your phone, so walk, outside take a curious. walk outside if yeah. your phone rings. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I have been here when people have been on their phones quietly, uh, but you know, I don't know how. Do, how does everybody feel about that? You know, well, um, I think maybe we could work in language around. I, I think these look really good, by the way. Well done. But I think maybe for that, I think that could get a little contentious because I think then we have to start getting in the business of policing people's phones. Totally use, agree. Um, which scares me. So I think what if we work in that we reserve the right. To, to ask people to move outside if it's too loud. I mean, I know that's still having to kind of police behavior, but at the mm -hmm. same time, at least that gives us a little bit and we don't have to ask that everyone is not on their phone, which, you yeah. know, I feel like if you get an emergency call and you do it quietly, mm -hmm. like that's fine with me. Yeah, I guess uh, two things. One, this whole policy is about policing behavior. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a conduct <laughs> policy. But secondly, I think the way she wrote it, the way Jennifer wrote it is completely appropriate, which is stepping outside is a courteous way to ensure that you're quiet. It doesn't say you must go outside. Mm -hmm. It just says it's being courteous to the people around you kind of thing. So to That's me, that call. was benign enough. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you almost don't even have to really step outside. Sometimes you can just step in the hallway or over by the entrance, uh, you know, one of the entrances. So just to make things a little bit quicker, um, can I uh, hear a motion to approve that policy with the um, modification that you will do about the cell phones? Can I, can I hear a motion? Yeah. Well, I can, I can make it. Yeah. Okay, I make a motion to approve um, the, the patron conduct policy effective, I guess, November 21st, 2022, because we are gonna include the date 
on, on the policies when they were when they were written. So I'll just say that again. I make a motion to approve uh, the new patron conduct policy with the one change regarding cell phone usage. Do I have a second? That was Mary Ellen. All in favor? Great. Let's move on. Yep. Um, patron, we're up to um, unattended children policy, which was also in the uh, Google Drive. Um, and I really just, um, again, uh, just as Ann described, there was a template that I used uh, from the Library Association, and it was uh, I felt that the, it was uh, very uh, comprehensive. Uh, what I was a little bit stuck on because there's a lot of different uh, recommendations as to what the age of the child, child should be uh, that should be allowed unaccompanied and unsupervised uh, in the library. So um, if you looked at the Google Drive, one of the versions, I put that in red, which is um, uh, I picked uh, the most common recommendation, which was the age of 10. Uh, and in terms of the responsible caregiver, I put the responsible adult 18 or older. If, are people comfortable with that? I wouldn't leave my 10 year old. <laughs> I, I think it's that's it's that's it's tough for me. 10 seems a little young to be unaccompanied, but. Yeah, I 10 to me seems young. I don't know. Yeah, I mean the the pool and and the town um, uses thirteen. Yeah. Um, our recreation department uses thirteen. I think that makes as, sense. As um, I mean we're not carding. So, so twelve <laughs> and under. Yeah, twelve and under. Um, the rec says recreation that you have to be accompanied by an adult. So. What grade are you in at age twelve? So six, so you're going to have somebody who's in sixth grade who can't be in the library by themselves. That that seems restrictive. That gets tough, especially if they're here for like chess or for something where mom and dad might be like running to get another sibling or something. Uh, I understand um, that the rules might apply to the pool where there's a, a question of safety, but um, I, I remember going to the library when I was in fifth and sixth grade because I had to do a report and I didn't want my parents hovering over me at the time. Jennifer, what's your feeling? Because you're here. Twelve. Yeah, that's what I think. Split the difference. Say twelve. What does our sign say in the thirteen? Thirteen. That seems like a uh, a good compromise. Yes. So then uh, can I hear, a, oh, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the uh, unattended children policy with the one modification to the age. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Who seconded it? Jenna. Jenna Weiss. Thank you, Mike. Anything else? Okay, moving along, uh, Jenna. No updates this month, but we'll flag that it's been a month and a half with our new social media and content consultant, and um, we're still optimizing ways of working, but it's going well so far. We'll share more um, as we get kind of, you know, into a more regular cadence in coming months in the new year. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. Selena, program development? No updates for this month. How is the vehicle registration as opposed to the kid registration? Has that kicked in yet? Um, it has, uh, maybe, I don't know if Jennifer, you have anything to add on it, but it seems like it's, it hasn't changed anything really so far that I can tell. Um, I haven't heard from parents either way, but we did implement that change in terms of the, the coding on the website. Okay, great. What we've managed to do is to make the most of the reservation system now. There were, might be um, five people that came with three kids each in order. And so the parking lot would sit empty, even on music days, have six or seven spots. And now we can register 20 cars. So we're definitely making most of it. Great suggestions. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, and I know um, the stories, um, you know, Larry Batwin's stories, they carpool. And um, they loved, I guess someone has it 
grandchildren, they love the car registration because they right. carpool here. That that program carpools here, and so they they get huge turnouts here, and they love the car registration. Good, that's fantastic. I'm glad that it helped. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Celine and Valerie. Nothing. Um, John. No update. Is Jennifer Savage? She said she'd be the children's room. Or can anyone speak about the yeah, children? Yeah, we can give the update. We're we're our um, CLC has just been really really busy, so we're just waiting. They've talked to a couple of people to share our drawings, and I think we're expecting something from them in December. Great, that's exciting. Okay, parking lot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, we were all here um, for the six thirty um, meeting. Um, we've seen a couple of emails. Um, we have a timeline of when this all started, predated me and predated everyone else on the board, um, and we've. Some of us have been in front of the planning board or have listened in. Um, so I just would like, at this point, feedback from the board. And then we should probably make a decision of where do we want to go from here. So Jenna, how about I start down the line? My W last name. Um, <laughs> let's see. So I think um, I was personally hoping for more of a show out, a turnout, um, just given you know, with where the town is at and all of the work that this board has put in. Um, I think I personally am still a little bit blurry on what the next steps look like. I think that the cost feels a little bit unknown to me. Like, I think an ideal for me would be to say, okay, we have a long range plan, right? I think John, you know, oversees that. Is there an option that would allow us to kind of like brick by brick look into what that could look like um I'm still a little unclear on that but I do think also with the estimates that I've heard to date knowing that we're taxpayer funded I am concerned about the current cost and I think without the foundation supporting that heavily um it concerns me with where the library is at and a lot of the matters that we've discussed privately in executive session um so I would like to hear the rest of the boards and maybe we can circle back the rest of the board's perspective and maybe we can circle back. I'm split right now, but if we still have the estimates with what you've shared, Bonnie, um, I think that fiduciary duty, like not able to proceed if the library is expected to shoulder the majority of that. That's my perspective, but I would like more clarity on cost. Mary Ellen. So I think where we left it when we were at that meeting is they're asking us to have an engineer from review ours. And that, that's the one step we can do. And that's that could be a hard cost. So I think once we get that, and we know whether we can go forward from there, but we would need funding for that at a minimum. That may end it. At a minimum, um, keeping in mind that our, um, I was, I'm always off by $10. Our engineer is 375 or 365 per hour. Um, and the for the traffic study, and then he has assistance. The least expensive assistance is 225. That is the traffic studies engineer. Our town engineer, um, it's 74 pages. Um, but it, we're, we weren't going to the town engineer yet, in my opinion. Just to, Mary Ellen's suggesting something different, I yes. believe, which is to, just to have our own engineer present, summarize, right? Present to review everything and present to us as a board right. so that we so can we figure know. out costs, yeah. I think is what your recommendation is. Be, because we don't to go that far out without knowing step one. Yeah. Well, he, um, our engineer, you know, I've had conversations because they're the ones that gave me the traffic study. Um, our engineer. Um, there were two accidents out front. Our engineer um, doesn't know how the planning board, um, he, he's not the planning board and he's not the town's engineer. He would have to answer the town engineers. He thought, oh, oh, but okay. But so, so the cost of the engineering for him, we don't, we could read the traffic study on our own, the 74 pages and where the town asked us to get another engineer. That's what I heard. Loud and clear. But that has nothing to do with the traffic study. Another engineer to look at our traffic study. 
they wanted a different engineer to look at the traffic study from what I gathered. Mike, you were there. I right. So that. I think what you're saying, Mary Ellen, and I think what Mary Ellen is saying is they were not happy with Beeler. And so there was a discussion around hiring an engineer that has presented before that they know that they like. And Mary Ellen, I think, is suggesting that we start at least there to find a new engineer and figure out costs from that engineer's perspective so that we can have a total dollar amount. Is that right, Mary Ellen? Okay, that, that has nothing to do with the traffic study engineer. It's a different engineer. Yeah. It's, that's why I'm getting confused. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 It wasn't anything to do with the traffic study engineer. So I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. So I'm confused too, because there's an engineer that could re read the report, a traffic engineer, but it, there's an engineer that would now design a construction engineer. It's the replacement of Beeler is the conversation. And Beeler is a construction engineer. Correct. Thank yes. you. Okay. All right. Selena? Um, I was heartened to hear that the neighbor that we expected to hear one perspective from did not come with that perspective that we expected. So that actually helped me in a way understand the current status of the quote opposition to the parking lot in a way. Um, I think that that was very helpful and I don't know anything, but I don't even know his name. I know, well, well, anyway, the point is I don't know anything about the person, but it felt like what he was suggesting seemed like a pos possible and positive next step that was tangible and had hard costs associated with it, sort of like what Mar Mary Ellen is saying. So um, if there is, we can discuss it together. I would love to hear everybody's opinion, but it does sound like something that we could tangibly do and potentially close out some kind of a chapter. That makes it, you know, where we will reach a fork in the road where right now I think we're a little bit more murky. Anne or, or Jenna? I was just going to say, I'm heartened by that as well. I heard that, but also like truly we had time for public comments and that wasn't shared publicly. So I'm having a hard time anchoring to that, frankly. Me too. He, he, um, he didn't want to comment publicly. Who didn't want to comment publicly? Yeah, yeah just go around All the room, right. man. So, you know, I was disappointed that that more people didn't speak in the community forum. Uh, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was hoping to to maybe base a decision on what I heard from from the community tonight, uh, and and it was so. You were heartened. I was, I was disheartened that we didn't we didn't hear from people. You know this. This is what I was kind of counting on. So I'm, I'm like in limbo. I, I truly am in limbo about this. Okay, Mike. My crystal ball says that we will not be doing a big parking lot expansion. But what I hear is that we need to do some steps in order to feel comfortable that we're doing that. But truthfully, I go to Yankees games and Mets games and Giants games and try and get out of the parking lot after the game is over. And I look at that left-hand turn as you get out of our parking lot. And I think of the line of cars that st starts there and goes all the way back to the expanded parking lot as somebody who's a little bit older tries to get that left turn done. So I have a lot of questions myself about a traffic study and the traffic flow in the library. So uh, I, I'd like to see, um, and I agree with the group, that we should somehow pin down uh, what exactly uh, we should do as next steps. Valerie? Yeah, so for me, it's always been the same, which is I, I need to know what it's going to cost and estimates thrown out by other board members. Like, just no offense. I want to actually, like, I want an engineer to tell me how much they're going to charge. I want the, you know, the traffic guy telling me how much he's going to charge. And I'd love, I want to be able to figure that out. I know there's still an unknown of the en town engineer. I firmly believe you can get an estimate. Um, I, I, it would be shocking to me that you couldn't get an estimate, whether it's from our own engineer or from, from him. 
Um, so like to me, I'd like I'd like a full like range that I feel comfortable is is accurate based on people that we might be hiring um, before I feel like I can make any decision. John. Um, I think the uh, I, obviously we would have liked to hear more from the public. I don't, I don't one way or another, to be honest, I thought it was going to be a lot of opposition because maybe that's the loudest voice or something or, or one way or the other, but there really wasn't much participation. So I, I hope the community appreciates that we did this to kind of raise awareness of it and, and give a voice to it. The history is an interesting thing where we went down this path and this goes beyond us, right? In previous boards, but the Royal we of the library board, right? Spent time, a lot of money going down a path that didn't go anywhere. So whether that's, um, you know, I don't think it's a fear, but fiduciarily, I don't want to keep going this and then this, and then we get to the next part and it's another question. You might as well go a little further and we end up with nothing. So I'm okay to move forward with the next engineer and I'm okay to even foot it. What I've been saying is I want a partner at this stage to come along with us to the unknown because no one's going to be able to tell me what the final number is today. We can wait for better estimates. No one's going to know what that final number is. I don't want to get into a position where we put this institution in a place where they're stuck holding the bill for that whole thing. And just the admin to get to that part, because for whatever reason, whether it's boards not working with us or whoever, it's it's been a challenge. It's been more than a challenge of, I think, what it should be, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And I just want to be careful what we do. But I'm willing to go ahead and make some investment here for the town, ambiguous or not, to get us to that fork in the road, like Selena said, and then we can make a decision or defer it. One decision might be we'll pick it up next year if there's not more groundswell from the town to go after the planning board to make it easier for us or come up with something, you know, to to drive this demand. That's how I feel. Great. Um, yeah, this is our since I've been on the board, it's our fourth um, open forum. Um, the last three prior forums, only our two neighbors attended. Um, this had a better turnout, but still not a great turnout obviously um so this is our fourth open meeting um with the parking lot um okay um uh, great because we're in a circle around to committee assignments but can your microphone yeah could we find out what could we put a ask out for a proposal to an engineer or we're not at that stage i, I think what bonnie's be? saying is you first need someone to run this committee so well, let's right. go through committee assignments okay, first it. and then we can vote on what happens next got it correct <laughs> thank you um oem nothing to report technology uh nothing to report but a procedure question is there any part of the agenda where you actually want me to tell you how much money we have in the bank i don't see us listed at all Um, okay, um, after we go through, okay, I have nothing, vendor contract, and yes, how about you tell us our balances? Okay, so our overall cash balance is uh, 1017773 We have 240000 uh at Key Bank, which we keep, and then we have uh, 67000 in checking to cover the warrants, a CD for 350000 to try and catch a good interest rate and $360,000 left in our savings account. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's circle back to committee assignments. So I asked everyone a month ago to think about committees that you're on. You can certainly stay on the ones that you're on um, or you know, add new ones or get rid of some and um, you know, start over or just keep what you have. Keeping in mind that some of these committees, if you do work, some of these committees um, would be hard if you're not able to sometimes come to the library during the day. And some of these committees work great if you work and you can do everything by email. Um, can I make a recommendation to change one committee? I, I talked about this, I think, last month. 
um, we put human resources and legal together because they were often um, one and the same. Um, really governance and legal should be together. Um, and so my suggestion was that we change governance to be governance slash legal and you keep human resources as Se its separately. own. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, based on what's going on in our library today, it seems to make more sense to me. Um, and then the only other question I had about committees, hold on, I have to Um, is some of the ones that are ad hoc, whether we still need them. And, and I'll start from the bottom instead of the that top. Was, that was my right. question. Yeah, okay, yes. Uh, the vendor contract yeah. review, I don't think we need that. No. Um, we implemented that. I think we're fine with that yeah. if everyone's okay with that. Yeah. The warming center, I think we're fine with that. The OEM, if everyone's okay with that. Wait, when you're saying if everyone's okay with that, you're saying to strike them. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes, I agree. Agree. Agree? Anyone have any? Yeah. Do we still need technology? I know there was like a big push to do a bunch of things. So it was an ad hoc, right? Uh, I can uh, ask Jennifer, but I think most of the big projects with technology are done. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so get yeah. rid of that too. Okay, great. And then the, okay, yeah. Those were the That's ones that it, I thought I think. we shouldn't I agree. have them. Okay. So let's start from the top. But John in finance, do you want to stay on that committee? Great. Um, and Mike is still the treasurer, so they work hand in hand. Um, now, we just made a, a um, move for governance and legal to be together. Yeah, and I think Bonnie, as the president, doesn't really sit on a committee. You just can sit on every committee that you want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like I just get CC'd on it. But I I have to say, um, you know, I, I input, you know, budget's my thing. So I do input yeah. in that. But. Um, so John will be the chair and Mike is a member. And then does He's, anyone else want to join finance? No, they got it. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I am not the number. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'll still be on it because I, I like to do the budget. Now, governess and legal. So Valerie's legal. Michael is uh, Mike is governess. You want to stay? Uh, I think that's a good time for me to step down and... Uh... I would take on some of the other commitments. All right, so I'll I'll continue to do legal and governance. The only thing I would ask is that <clears throat> someone, I definitely want someone on it with me for two reasons. One, um, just to get someone else up to speed because I think, well, some of us terms expire at the same time, but um, just to make sure that it's not, you know, kind of a sole one person handling everything. Would anyone like to help Valerie? I, I would, I'll stay on that. Okay, Anne. Um, public relations, Jenna, would you like to stay on it? Yes. Any other committees or you want to stay on? Um, I prefer to focus mostly on that. And it okay. dovetails often with programming, even if Great. I'm not officially on it. Great. Selena? I would like to continue to be on public relations and I, can t I will stay on programming. Great. Thank you. Um, John, long range planning? Okay, so, okay, so let's, so, yeah, yeah, let's start, start going in order. Okay, so for pub public relations, Jen is going to stay, yeah. and Selena, Jennifer Savage isn't here to speak, so, but, okay, then, then after public relations is programming, which, which Selena wants to stay as chair, and then there were a lot of people on that one. Well, Jennifer, I don't want to answer for Jennifer because she's not here. Yeah. No, she's not. But Jen, but Jennifer Savage, um, if you want to reach out to her, if she wants to stay on it, because you two work together, I don't want to answer for her. And Mike's on Mike, that. Mike, Mike, you're listed there too. Are you staying? Okay. okay. So human resources. Okay, so Valerie is stepping down. Valerie had, if. I could take that over if uh, you want okay. me to. Okay, and Mary Ellen, you're on Mary it. Mary Ellen. Would you like to stay on it? Okay. Anyone else want to join Human Resources? Okay. Long range planning, I'm sorry, we just went through it with John. Mike, would you like to? Okay, and how about Mary Ellen? Okay. Um, children's room update. So that is going on, that's an ad hoc, but it's going on right now. Um, Jennifer, I don't want to answer for her. 
Okay. Um, Valerie, you're also on it. I, my assumption is I'm going to step off because I'm going to volunteer to do the parking improvement. Okay. Mary Ellen, you're going to stay on it. And Anne? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Parking improvement. I would like to step down because I have less than a year left. And I just think to, to continue this with less than a year just makes no sense. Yep. I um, will volunteer to lead it. Okay. Now, Valerie's going to need help. Um, Mike and Anne are currently on it. Do you guys want to stay on it? Um, I think it's, uh, I'm overcommitted on that. I'm going to step down. And Anne, you seem very, you seem very committed. I'm I mean, being I mean, honest with you. You're very committed. I mean, I, I can stay on the parking lot. It's uh You sure? Yeah, it's okay. It's gonna be the the death of us all, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. And did you hear from Jennifer? Okay. Okay. So Selena by email, if you don't mind, Selena. Um we're just going to assume that Jennifer is going to stay. Um, the children's are programming again, but I don't want to answer for her. So we'll, and see if she wants any other committees or she wants to stay or change or something. Okay. Okay, great. Now that we have the new committees. Bye. Um, Sorry to interrupt you. I would like to actually join the human resources committee. God, I thought oh, you were going to join the parking lot with me. Jen. What are you doing? Well, yeah, but I trust it's in good hands. <laughs> I think there's actually, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. And I think there's, yeah. Oh, okay. great. So now Jen is going to join. Have that, Anne? So, so she's, she'll join human resources as well as public relations. Great. Um, Jennifer. So if we're done with committees, well, do we have to go back to the parking lot committee now that we, everyone was saying like, what are the next steps? And we were kind of waiting until it was transferred. Sure. I think she was. Yeah. 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 So obviously I need to spend a little bit of time with Bonnie. Um, but also, um, you know, I guess my thought is that we, I and the committee talk to some of the recommended engineers first and get some ideas on pricing for the, and again, we're still taking a little baby step here, right? Um, and I doubt that's gonna happen by the December meeting, just to be really clear. <laughs> um, so it's going to be the January meeting so would before we be asking them for a proposal or what would we, what's the ask? Sure. I think that the start is um, obviously to find someone that has any interest. I mean, that's the problem, right? The problem is you first have to hire someone to even right. go to the next step. Um, so it's a matter of first talking to them and seeing, I think, who's available, who's interested, et cetera. And then ultimately, yes, what their proposal would be. Um, the one thing that we haven't we've all talked about, but we haven't solidified is that like, you're going to need a number to ask for money, right? So you're going to need, is it 20 spots we're asking for? Is it 30 spots? Is it 40 spots? Is it 60 spots? And until we do that, it's hard to get anyone to give us any estimates, um, you know, on certain things as well. Um, you're going to, an engineer, you know, he's, he's going to give us an estimate for redoing the whole plans for all those types of things. Um, which will, you know, be costly. And so I don't think it's spending any money at this point. It's just finding out what the, what the future could be. What are you looking for specifically, Selena? Nothing. I'm just thinking about the small, medium, large. I know. So, I, you know, I kind of like, I think we already, we were way past large, yeah. right? Like, Right. We're not getting, spots. or even the 59 was the last number we right. were at, right? Uh, again, unless people here say, no, I would rather ask for 59 spots, then we can go down that path. Again, everything I heard from everyone was that 20 to 30 range. So if that's what people are thinking is where you would target, um, then I think that's at least, you know, just start with the 30 and see what the what yeah. they say. I think that's John, were you going to say something? Yeah. That's probably more a question. What what's the limiting factor? Not that I want to have somebody tell me the number of spaces, but I guess what I'm not understanding is one person crosses the road at a time. So if they can figure out how to cross the road, then they do that safely and they go ahead. So if I have 50 cars lined up, just maybe it's the time it takes for them to exit. If I had 50 people leaving at once, then it's just a traffic issue, I guess, at that corner of 50 cars leaving, as opposed to 
10 cars or 20 cars or 30 cars. So if an engineer looks at that, would he say 59 is too many based on some calculation of how long it takes for someone to exit and what the backup is of cars waiting to leave or something like that? Like, I, I guess I'm trying to understand. We keep throwing out these numbers. I don't even know what small, medium, large means. I don't think it's if, if we have the space, I guess, land for 75 or whatever the number was. So I don't know if they have any guidance on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could talk about it. I, I think, I guess my perspective is that we started with, I think, 90 or 80 something, and we ended at 59. Um, and the reason we did that was because of our neighbors and the planning board, right? That's why we did it. That's why we dropped down. And then, and then there's another thing that's really important, which is, I hear you like you could say, well, why wouldn't you add, why wouldn't you get as many spots as you possibly can if you have the land? But the issue is also going to be, does your programming show that you need that number of spots? So the planning board is always going to come back to need, right? Because we're already over lock cover, we're already over all these things, and we already have all these hurdles. So like they're going to start from that perspective. So then that's a limit. Yeah. If they're looking, if we're already over in the extra innings here and then it's a planning board and everything's an exception, that's a limit. So I get that. I'm not saying to ask for the maximum necessarily either. I just wanted to know what that, what would that number be? Or, or, cause like when they told it, okay, so we heard, what if somebody said, you know, maybe you'll get 10. They're not, they don't have any basis for that number. Just like we don't have 30. So that's, I guess, what I'm trying to get to of fighting facts against facts here. I haven't heard anyone present some number that's like, is it 10? You can only fit 10 or 6 or 20. You can you can fit, I think, 75. Um, I think that that's why I keep going back to need, right? Like, to me, it's a question of what do we think we need to operate the library um, and our children's programs and our big events have proven that we need more than 23. Yep. <laughs> Less than 59. <laughs> well, all I'd say then to move forward is we then pick a number, if that's all we're going to do here, and, and try to propose a number. I think proposing multiple things, like it's a choice, is going to be very expensive to come up with all those scenarios. That's all. No, I hear you. I, I agree. I don't think we go forward with multiple choices. I know that was one person's suggestion, but but I don't I don't think that's the right answer. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Director's report. <laughs> Heidi brought to my attention that I missed page two on one of the overdrive bills and that the amount, the new amount for the um, warrant should be forty six thousand. $760.14. That's a difference of $495.96. Repeat. $46,760.14. Okay. Increase do of 495.96. Do I have a motion for I move that we amend the warrant uh, motion uh, to uh, 46760 and 14 cents. Second. I second. All in favor? Great. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, director's report? Mm hmm Okay. So I just wanted to um, bring up a couple of things on... December 16th, hopefully, uh, we're planning to do a, uh, the Library Foundation actually, is planning to do a musical performance concert with Bernstein favorites, uh, featuring a Broadway and opera singer to promote and celebrate the installation of the acoustic panels, which we are just so pleased. I think it's a, a roaring success. Um, and they, they came out really beautiful too. It was all done in one day. Um, and I was so pleased with the, um, the vendor that we worked with, so. Thank you so much to the foundation. It really solved a huge problem. Thank you. And I'm so pleased to hear that the um, art event went well uh, with that. So I just wanted to also let you know that the uh, all the staff attended an active shooter training with the Pound Ridge Police Department. That went very well. 
I have been in um, talks with the Pound Ridge Partnership about sponsoring the Drag Queen Story Time at uh, Color Run 2024. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from them. The impression that I got, they literally said that there was sort of, um, the board was split. And they were making a suggestion of maybe a compromise rather than a drag queen actually reading um, stories that, that maybe they could, someone else could read stories about things uh, that would be affected like Pride Month, uh, uh, those type of topics. So I'm waiting to hear back from them. I'll stay on top of that. Uh, I wanted to also let you know that I'm applying for a grant called Libraries Transforming <laughs> Communities. It's for accessible for small and rural communities. Uh, to increase accessibility of facilities, services, and programs for people with disabilities. So we've decided, I'm actually working with this with um, our neighbor, Evelyn Carmichael, who also runs our sensory story time. And we're focusing on um, programming, supplies, and technology for children with autism and learning disabilities, which we're both really excited about. The December 11th is the um, deadline, and I'll let you know how it turns out. Great. And do you want to talk um, about new business, the Ichabon Lighting and the... Um is actually going to be uh, Anne. Oh, okay. Anne, can I quickly just interject? I just sure. heard from Jen that she wants to stay where she is. Okay, great. Thank you, Selena, for reaching out. Thank sure. you. Great. Thank you for reaching out. And the Ichabon lighting that Mike Clark donated. So, yeah, we had spoken about um, the sculpture and that at night it would be nice if it was lit up. So Mike Clark uh, uh, donated uh, some solar lights that uh, seemed to work really well in the beginning and but there is a switch so we're not sure tonight tonight it's raining and it's it's dark out there so we're not sure if the landscapers accidentally turn the switch off but i think for now um you know we can keep the keep the solar lighting and thank you mike thank you mike ann and i were here and we checked it out one night and it looks great thank and, you again, and you mike. were the one who knew that there was went over there and there was a switch mm -hmm. so someone might be turning it on turning it on and off but Okay. okay, great. Great. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Mike. You. And the plaques, benefactor plaques. Oh, so uh, we have, you know, we have paintings of uh, three benefactresses. That's the word benefactresses. And uh, Jennifer and I are in the process of uh, designing um, small plaques to put either underneath or above them with the, with the name of the, the benefactress and uh, what their contribution was to the library. And what, what? I helped with the wording. Remember okay. with well, actually, actually, Jennifer, what's the name of that app? Chat. What is it? Yeah, we worked chat, with an chat, app. Chat. <laughs> that was yeah, and, and uh, the app was great. Came up with some beautiful wording, actually, and uh, so now we're just matching. Uh, we're making the plaques out of out of wood and metal, wood and metal, and we're um, you know, we're we're getting a, uh, we're gonna get those done. Okay. And thank you. Yeah, it was a great app. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Thank you, Anne. I, Jennifer, I just have a question that it, 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 I just thought of it. Remember once we applied for the best small libraries in America? Remember, did we? <laughs> Which, okay, so, okay, all right, thank you. Great. And, um, before we open it to public remarks, any other um, remarks from the board about anything? No, um, public remarks? Oh, God. <laughs> Um, I guess number one, um, the library is not Yankee Stadium. If you were to uh, sit here when a program ends, even the most popular one, nobody leaves at the same time. Many children go to the children's room. Some people leave. It takes a lot of time to buckle in all the different children. There is not a line going out uh, up the parking lot. So I, I don't think that's a concern. Um, you know, if you feel it is, certainly come and, and watch the exit process. It is it is not complicated. <laughs> um, there will not be a line going up through the whole parking lot. It just doesn't happen that way. You might get one or two cars. Um, uh, what else? Um, I mean, well, I guess Michael's not here, but uh, again, you know, the concern with pulling out and making the left. I mean, you guys had traffic study. You've had, you know, there's two accidents that had nothing to do with the library. I think it's more about a what if scenario that that doesn't seem to be coming to fruition. So I think there's a lot of fear about fear. That's all it is. It's not substantiated in any way. Um, otherwise, you'd be seeing accidents left and right because there has been a lot of program here. I was here, you know, attending programs when there were 40 kids in this room and there was parking all over the place before you guys shut it down. So all of those cars had to exit and leave. 
on their own time and nobody seemed to get into accidents with it so you're careful like every other left turn in this town <laughs> um the other thing is i think john brought up a really good point um about um you know the lack of opposition i think speaks volumes uh, you know if there was a strong opposition you'd be hearing it um i think unfortunately you know the the major support is going to be from young families and you know we, we kind of have discussed this before but they're either not able to attend the time or the fact that this is thanksgiving or they're just ever because they're home with their young children or their caretakers are here so they're not maybe not even aware of it but i guarantee that there is support amongst those that are attending here and encountering all of the issues um and uh, you know enough of the hypothesizing and guessing uh the next step with the parking lot is uh, exactly as valerie said which is to get you know proposals from an engineer so you know you're talking hard costs what are we all talking about and then you can support it or not but but guessing at what the cost might be or what you may or may not be doing doesn't really do any good it's just a waste of energy essentially um you know you want to be able to make decisions based on facts and and i think that's what people also want to hear what what are we able to do um, and don't expect someone to to tell you it, it's going to be based on the needs of the library because that's how you're going to defend your case to the planning board is to say, hey, we need X number of spots because this is what our programming is. This is what our programming will be. This is the plan, and this is why we need these spaces. And if you do that, I, I think that there will be more parking here, and we will all be much happier. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Um, okay. It, um I don't think there's anyone on on the computer. So in that um, in this regards, happy Thanksgiving. And I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Um, any other comments before we adjourn? No? Thank you. And we're not going in executive session. We're no executive.